Hello everyone and welcome to another review by Emily Illustrator. Today we are going to be reviewing the Arteza new Everblend Ultra Markers. Um, which are upgraded from the previous Everblend art markers. The colors we're going to be going over today are the classic tones and the pastel tones. Each of these comes with 12 in each. The nibs are still the same. They have broad nib, fine nib, and replaceable nibs just as before. We've got our classic tones and our pastel tones for what we're going to try here. And then on the back here, you have listed all of the colors. Now, you'll notice that the labeling on these new ones are going to be a little bit different than the past. Now they have adopted the uh, lettering based on what colors are used to blend it. So, you know, you have your yellows which start with Y, you have YR for yellow red, you have red, red, purple, purple, blue, blue, you get the idea. Um, one of the other things which we will uh, probably touch on a little bit later is on their website now, along with um, all of the description and the info, you also have a new color chart that they have made available. And this one is a blank one, so you're free to fill this in. A lot of these upgrades I feel like are similar to uh, the way that Copix does theirs. I think one of the big differences still um, is that uh, the Arteza ones still have the uh, chisel nib and the fine nib and not a brush tip nib, which I think would make a huge improvement um, someday. So Arteza, if you're watching, you should uh, do a brush tip on your markers. That would be amazing. <laughs> um, so here is the color chart here. Okay, so it's got all of the colors here. You can see how the labeling has changed. And then it explains the color families as well as the blending groups, intensity value, um, everything that you need to know about the colors of your markers. And like I said, there is also a black and white one for you to fill in for yourself. These are available on the website, but I will also put the link for these in the description below so that you can fill these out for yourself. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at these now. We're going to go ahead and open them up. They come in just a cardboard box to hold each 12, so they uh, do have cases available if you would like to purchase, you know, if you end up getting more of the markers and would like to purchase more durable case. Um, otherwise, uh, I don't see why you couldn't keep them uh, in the box themselves. So we're just going to pull all of them out. So we'll have 24 here. So, on the markers themselves, they look pretty similar to the previous markers. I have a marker on hand here. Let's see, this is an orange. Let's just grab this one here. This is from the previous set, the Arctic Blue. So we're going to compare how they look here. So, okay. Silly difference. One of the differences that we can see is that it has the same Arteza and Everblend, but the sides have switched as far as what's next to the label. So on this side with the Arteza label, you have the chisel on this one, the, uh, the fine tip. So this is the older marker, this is the newer one. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it. And the newer one actually has, so this is the older one. The newer one actually has a lot more information um, on the back side of it. So on this newer one, you can see it's got the name, it's got the number, alcohol-based dye ink, because that's what these art markers are. They are an alcohol-based marker. They are not a water marker. Um, and then they've got, you know, American Company, this product, Plants Trees, so very cool in that one, designed in the USA. And then you've got the handy little barcode versus the original, which just said Arteza and the little stamp here. Um, so, so far that is the difference. What we're going to go ahead and do, um, I have a color chart here, we're going to take a look at where I swatched out the markers, and then we are going to compare some of the colors and test out some of the blending with these new markers, see if there's any kind of a difference in the uh, coloring capability. 
Okay, so this is the coloring chart that I have made up here. As you can see, we've got our classic colors, our pastel colors. Um, having these right next to each other really tells you the difference about how light it is. But here is what I was most interested in. For me personally, a lot of you that have been around know that I like kind of light, kind of rainbowy pastel colors. So when I saw that there was specifically pastel colors, something that's really light, I got really excited and I was curious to see just how light they really were in comparison to the other ones. So we have the classic of the ultra markers and the pastel of the ultra markers. I grabbed a couple of lighter mar markers from the previous set of uh, Everblend markers and we're going to kind of compare them and we're also, like I said, going to see how the newer ones um, blend together. Okay, so for things first, I chose five markers here that we are going to drop some color on here and then compare them to the other markers that came in the classic tones and the pastel tones. So this one is white or quartz white. These are all going to be the older sets, okay? So this is quartz white here. Make sure we get plenty of color there. So these are going to be the older version. Okay, and this column will be for the newer version. Okay. All right, so this was quartz white. Okay, let's just slide this on over. Okay, so for the newer version, these ones all came from the pastel set. I grabbed two of the greens because I feel like they kind of fall in comparison to this. So the one that we're going to try first is the white quartz. Now it's interesting because quartz white definitely has more of a peachy tone to it, while white quartz has a little bit more of a slightly yellowish uh, tone to it. So this is white quartz. Okay, so white quartz, okay. Oh, and you know what we should mark? We should mark, okay, so the previous number for quartz white was A601, while white's quart is now, is now Y39. Okay, then the next one that we're going to do is pale aqua blue from the newer version. Okay. Figure that was pretty similar to Arctic blue. And actually I have multiples of the Arctic blue from the past set. This was probably one of my favorite lighter colors. I use a lot. So this one is pale aqua blue. Aqua blue. And the number on this one is BG19. Okay. Now it's interesting, this is sapphire yellow, but in the new set we also have a sapphire yellow. So this is sapphire yellow. As you can see, way, way different. In fact, this is considerably brighter than that sapphire yellow. Okay, sapphire yellow. And that is Y15. I kind of like that they kind of went to the Copic style of of numbering it because it makes a little bit more sense. Like it can tell you, you know, what colors went into it to make that color, you know? Okay, so the other two greens that I want to put on here is Mantis Green and Pomelo Green. So this is Mantis Green. Okay. And this is, I don't know why I did two lines. Okay, in my head I was thinking, oh, two greens. Okay, so this is Mantis Green. Okay, G17. Ignore the fact that I did two lines. Ugh. It's almost like I'm going live here. All right, Pomelo Green here. Now these are pretty similar. These are pretty similar. This one, obviously, Pomelo is a little bit lighter, but they're in the same kind of color family. Okay, Pomelo 
green and this one is G09. And the last one here, this one is Periwinkle from the older version. This one is also Periwinkle. Okay. Now those are pretty similar. However, if I were to say the difference in color, hang on, Periwinkle, okay, P, B, O, 09. So that means purple, blue, O, 09. But here's the interesting thing. In my opinion, now everybody sees color differently, right? I mean, it's it's all a little bit subtle for everyone. But for me, what I see is that this periwinkle blue is actually a little, not periwinkle blue, sorry, I was thinking blue. This periwinkle has a little bit more of a blue tone than this one. I feel like it might have a tiny bit more red in it. But as you can see, this periwinkle is darker. So as a whole, I believe that there are some, like, this pale aqua blue is slightly lighter than the arctic blue. Um, I like these choices of lighter greens than the greens they had here. So I am not, I am not uh, opposed to the new choices of color. I find it interesting when they change some of them so differently, as in quartz white to white quartz. We have a very peachy, very yellow. These are very different. So here's the thing. If you get these markers, you are definitely going to want to have a brand new color chart. Just because they have the same name will not mean that they are going to have uh, the same color by any means. As far as the ink themselves, I'm not seeing too much of a difference, but here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and blend um, some of the newer markers here to kind of see how they work well together. Okay, so for this I've chosen uh, three groups um, going across the classic tones and the pastel tones. Um, for our greens that we're going to blend together, I'm going to use cactus green, aura green, and mantis green. Okay, so let's start with that. We're going to use the fine tip nib here. All right, so this is, we're starting with cactus green. Okay. Oh, here's an interesting thing. I actually feel like this fine tip nib is a little bit more fine tip than the others. Let's take a look. Hmm. No, I guess it's about the same. Yeah, I guess it's about the same. Maybe not. It just seems, it seems, maybe because they're brand new and I haven't worn them down at all yet. Okay, so you definitely get a darker color when you layer them on top of one another. So now we're going to grab the Aura Green, okay? And we're going to start on top. And we're going to kind of blend this out. Not bad, really. That's actually a really nice blend. We're going to grab Mantis Green. And we're going to start all the way from the back and go across the top. Now I am by no means an expert with markers, so if somebody is watching and they're like, why is she using the markers that way? Um, it's just the way I do. <laughs> okay. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Now one of the things you might want to do too is make sure that you have, when you're using the alcohol markers, make sure that you have a piece of paper behind it because you do get some bleed through. I mean, they're alcohol markers. I don't know any alcohol markers that don't bleed through. Copic or Arteza or there's a number of them, but alcohol markers will blend through. So make sure, especially if you're doing it in a coloring book, make sure there isn't a picture on the other side that you don't want to ruin or test it out or print it out separately um, before you use it. Okay, so now we're going to use topaz blue. They're really pretty colors, and we're going to use the chisel tip this time. Okay, very pretty. And then we're going to use sky blue. Okay, grab the chisel tip here. Now obviously you let out a lot more ink when you're using the broad side of the chisel tip. I mean, this is going to soak through quite a bit. We'll take a look at it on the back when we're done. And then we have pale aqua blue. Not too bad. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to do sea urchin red. Let's go ahead and do the chisel tip again, okay? Sea urchin red. 
And then we're going to use Aurora Pink. Okay. Very pretty color. I like that Aurora Pink. And then we are going to use the Ballerina Pink. We'll take a look at the back here in a second just to see how much it's soaked through. There we go. I still feel like a brush tip would just benefit these immensely. I feel it would just bring them, it, it would just knock these out of the park. All right. Let's take a look at the back side. Okay, so clearly a lot more ink soaked through when we use the chisel tip, but that makes sense because we were putting more pressure, it was a broader tip. In general, it just released um, more ink. But I am not totally unhappy with the blend. Um, and the tips, the fine tips are small enough that I could see you being able to do this on a coloring page. Um, you know, backgrounds, use a chisel tip. More fine details, use the fine tip. It actually is considerably, um, considerably fine so like this is the wisteria purple here I mean you can see I mean that's pretty that's pretty fine tip you can go at it from the side like this so you get a little bit broader strokes on the chisel tip there's a number of ways you could use it you can do on the broad side on the tip at an angle. There's a number of different ways. So um, I'm not, you know, uh, upset with the nibs by any means. I just feel like a brush tip would really step it up quite a bit. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty pleased with them. I don't see a giant difference in uh, ink quality. However, I am seeing an improvement in color choices because there's more color choices now as well. An improvement in color choices, the labeling system, the resources like the color charts, I find this extremely handy. Um, so there are definitely some improvements. Uh, are you, should you upgrade your previous markers to your newer markers? If you've got a full set of the original Everblend markers and you're thinking, well, these are no good now, I should get the new one, I say, hold off. It's not, I, I wouldn't say it's super necessary to buy the ultra ones. However, if you are wanting new colors, if you're wanting, you know, a wider selection, more detail organization, then I say absolutely go for it. Um, so yeah, all together, I like them. I like the colors. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with them. So go check it out. Um, all the links are in the description below. There's, like I said, there's lots of new colors. Go look it over. Find the set that's right for you. I'll include some links in the description below. Um, if you like this video, feel free to, uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!